minus t, which is zero. Sine of zero is zero, and so this whole term disappears. Uh, cosine of t minus t is one, so uh, you get e to the negative two t over five. That's this one. And then doing the same with zero, now sine uh, has a value along with cosine because they're both sine of t. And uh, you basically just do all of that, and this is the final result. Nice. Anyone has any question? Yes, Shushen, question. Uh, the question like this, when you substitute like a side T minus W, so I just want to know, and then the T and W, which one is like a, a variable, which one is constant, both like a variable like this, because when I read the no, I can fuse for this T minus W, like a, which one is constant, which one is variable, two of them is variable like this. Good so, question. uh, yeah. Essentially, uh, W is your uh, variable that you're integrating with respect to. Uh, mm -hmm. And the way you uh, can definitely be sure of that is you have T up here as a bound. And mm -hmm. you should never have your integrating variable be one of the bounds. Oh, because okay. that's uh, not really defined. Okay, right. So let me have a question when I have this. Okay, just for example, if like a, uh, I use like a side T, like uh, um, replace use like a psi 4t. So when you like integral psi uh, 4t minus 4w, what is like integral mm -hmm. from negative co suppose 4 cosine 4t minus 4t 4w like this. When it, when you have like a um, constant uh, like a, in the t, so I was confused because this one side t, the constant is one. It's easier to integral. But when I have like a, in, uh, like a constant uh, in front of t, so I can feel it's like a t or w, which one is like a constant, which one is variable. So yeah, so, so uh, t uh, along with the four uh, is a constant along with the, the four mm -hmm. that you're going to have in front of w. And so okay. when you uh, either derive or integrate that, you, you basically, uh, so in this case, uh, as you can see, uh, because we need to uh, integrate, because we need to derive the function along mm -hmm. with what's inside of the function, uh, the T, because it's a constant, just completely just becomes zero. And I'm only integrating with respect to the negative W, or I'm sorry, okay. I'm only de uh, deriving with respect to negative w. And so yeah, I pull the negative out because, and get the yeah. cosine. All right, mm -hmm. thank you, thank you. Good job, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Let's see, Yaprak next. Can you guys see it? Yeah. Okay, so um, I'm presenting question 5B um, from homework 21. So I'm just going to prove that Laplace of the convolution of any two functions um, is equal to the product of the Laplace of f of t and Laplace of g of t. And I just realized that um, while I was writing the definition for the convolution theorem, I just like, I this should be w, not t. Uh, right. Yeah, so I just want to point that out. So, um, so I first calculated the Laplace transforms of the convolution of two functions, f of, f of t and g of t. Um, by definition, convolution of f of t and g of t is equal to the integral from 0 to t, f of w times g of t minus w, dw. So taking Laplace transform of both sides, we get the integral from zero to infinity um, e to the negative st times the convolution of the two functions. So this part actually, like we can think of it as f of t, like if you think the um, definition of the Laplace of any functions, 
and then um, so we have like two integrals here. Actually, we can simplify that by swapping the order. So um, for the integral belonging, belonging to the convolution, the upper limit is t, but we need to um, integrate over all time, like meaning from zero to infinity because of the definition of Laplace transform of any function. Um, so like since um, the upper bound and the lower bounds of the two limits are the same, we can actually um, combine them um, into one integral because they like it's iterated so you can uh, actually combine it if the bounds are the same. And then um, I also substituted um, u for t minus w to transform the double integral into an equivalent form with the swapped order. And then after doing that, in order to like um, get this kind of form, like we have to split it. And then actually we can do this with the theorem called um, Fubini's theorem. I looked mm -hmm. up online. We can do that because, I mean, the theorem works here because um, the integrand is the product of the two functions. And then each one depends on only one of variables of the integration, so you can split it. Um, and then after I split it, I realized that um, this first, no, the inner integral is the Laplace of um, g of t, and then the other one is the Laplace of f of t. And then by doing this, um, yeah, I get to prove that this is true for any functions. Nice. Anyone has any questions? Shusei, you have questions? Oh, no, no. I can. Oh, no, no. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you, Yatak. Thank you. And, uh, Israel. Israel, okay, take your time. Oh, your audio is not working? Yeah, I see the sign of your audio, but I don't hear you. Okay, while well, you're trying to fix that, let's have Jun Yi. So um, I'm presenting the homework of 21 question seven, which is to use the convolution theory to um, to do, uh, find the inverse of the capital F of S. So um, if the uh, given question is one over S minus one to the square, and the convolution theorems is a Laplace of H of T is equal to the capital H of S equal to F of S times G of S. So which means the Laplace of F times G is equal to the Laplace of F times the Laplace of G. So um, I can split it up the F of S to equal to the one over S minus one times the one over S minus one. Then uh, by the transform standard table, the a plus of e up e to the t is equal to one over s minus one. So the one over s minus one to the square is equal to the plus of e of t times the plus of e to the t. 
So the inverse of it is equal to the x of t equal to e to the t times e to the t. And use the convolution integration that h of t is equal to the integral where, where the w from the w equal to 0 to w equal to t f of w times the g of t minus w dw. So I plug in back to the um, e to the t that I got um, from 0 to t integral from 0 to t e to the w times the e to the t minus w. So um, okay. here's the question that um, like I found I, I, I found two solutions, but I've, I think the second one will be the correct one instead of the first one I did here on the top here. So but the final answer, like I do a separation, like the integral, I separate them like two times uh, e to the w. Like when I integral that e to the w is e equal to e to the w. Uh, from uh, t uh, from zero to t times a negative e to the t minus w from zero to t, and I got the answer is negative e to the two t plus one. But um, uh, the second answer that I do because I I, I figure it out that e to the w times the e to the t minus w, their power like the degree of the power can cancel it out, which uh, left e to the t integration zero from, uh, from zero to t and the answer for that i got t times e to the t <laughs> okay let me ask you which one you think is right i think the second <laughs> one <laughs> you cannot be both right right the first one you did something wrong oh can you look at it tell me what's wrong yeah this is a count two knowledge <laughs> i'm not really sure i I know I'm doing something wrong for that. You're telling but people. Like, you're telling people, the integration of a product of two functions is a product of two integrations. Is that true? Is that the addition instead for that? Or no? No. no. You're inside the integration sign. Oh. Just pretend those two those two functions cannot be combined like you did for the second part, uh -huh. right? The product of integration is not no. The integration of a product of two functions is not the product of two integrations. Okay. Does it make sense? Think about it. Okay, yeah. this is integration. It's opposite. It's a differentiation. How do you differentiate? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, well, you're right. wrong, right? The yes, I, I know, because unless they have like uh, addition or like the minus sign, so I can do a, like a separate integration instead, right? But the uh, multiplication, I cannot right, usually do that. You have the, right, usually you have to apply the uh, integration by parts if you have, if uh -huh. you have a product in the integral. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, thank you. So this one is incorrect. So the, the answer That's will be right. the t times e to t. That's right. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Christian. Christian, then Yinping, Su Xian, Liz. So I'm, I'm changing my question because my other classmate uh, has the same, I believe. Oh, okay. No problem. So we're going to have uh, Yinping. Yinping, if you're ready. Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go ahead. Okay, my question is Devin from homework 20 and uh, is y double prime plus 2y prime plus 2y is equal to 2 cosine t plus sine t when y0 equal y prime 0 equal 0. We use, we use the Laplace transform by transforming the 
differential equation, and we can get the uh the Laplace y double pi plus two Laplace y pi plus two Laplace y equals to two times Laplace cosine t plus Laplace sine t, and we plug in all the y zero and y pi zero, we can get the f s uh, y s it is equal to two s plus one over two s square plus one times s square plus two s plus two. Then we using the partition fraction, we can get two s is equal to a s plus b times s square plus two s plus two plus c s plus d times s square plus one. Then finally we have a plus c equals to zero, two a plus b plus c equals to zero, two a plus two b plus c equals to two b plus d is equal to zero. Uh, by this equation we can have a equals to negative c. 2a equals to negative b, uh, b minus d, and a is equal to negative b minus d over 2, and d is equal to negative 2b. So 2a plus 2b plus c, we can change from to um, negative b plus negative b over 2, then the equation is equals to, so we have b is equal to negative four over three, and then d is equal to a over three, a is equal to negative two over three, c is equal to uh, two over three. Then we have y s is equal, to, we plug in all the a, b, c, d, we get y s is equal to uh, this equation. Then we solve the, the we solve um the two over three times s plus a over three over s square plus two s plus two we um compute the square of the uh s plus one to the square plus one then we change this this um we change this two to the to the um change this two we write the numerator in terms of the s square plus one and s plus one to a square then we can use the table to find the inverse of law plus so Good. we we know the Laplace sine kt is equal to k over, uh, we know the Laplace sine kt and Laplace cosine kt. And we use this uh, table, we can find the negative two over three times which s over s squared plus one is equal to negative two over three times cosine t. And uh, other is similar, so we can get the Final answer: Y T is equal to the log inverse of inverse of log loss of Y S. So the final answer is uh, negative two over three plus two over three times e to the negative two times cosine t plus negative four over three plus two e to the negative t times sine t. Okay. Nice work. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone have a question? Okay, that's uh, so Christian. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, I was actually okay. mistaken. I thought someone had the same question as I did, but no, I have 21, not 20. So yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Sharing it right now. Okay. See it. Popping up. Okay. Yes. Great. Uh, so in this problem, I was told to find the Laplace transformation of the given function. Uh, in this circumstance, what we're going to use is the um, 
you're going to use the sort of property that if you find a Laplace of a function f of t over t, you're going to find, um, you could just find the integral from s to infinity of f of u. So uh, essentially what you're going to do is just take the function on top of this t right here, e of t minus 1, you're going to find the Laplace of that function. And then once you find that Laplace of that function, uh, what you're going to do is, uh, what I did right here was simplify it into like one cohesive rational function. That's what I did to make it more simpler for me. And what you're going to do once you find a Laplace of that function up top, it's just evaluated on the integral from S to um, infinity. And then you're going to substitute your values, the original values of the variable S with U. Or it could be any arbitrary value, but it's going to be, um, that value is just going to be integrated, okay? Um, but it's not going to be S. It, it would just make things confusing for you. But yeah, just just follow that method. Uh, once you have this uh, expression, you found your integrand practically, you're going to integrate it in terms of U. You integrate that integrand. Um, by at first noticing that you could put it into partial fractions because you can't do it straight up right here. Once you put it into partial fraction form, the integrand in partial fraction form, find the value for your A, find the value for your uh, B. What you're going to do is then um, substitute back in that newly found, um, that newly found integrand using partial fractions. And now you can integrate um, which go with, with respect to u, because it's in a, a form that can be integrated. Once you do that, you find out that the form it's going to take on is negative ln of u, and then this one is going to take in the um, take on the form of plus ln of u minus one. You're going to evaluate um, from s to infinity, and in doing so, you're going to find out that the left side, which is your infinity. It's going to be zero because as this function goes to infinity and as this function heads to infinity, this function is going to be canceled out by this positive function because it's practically negative infinity uh, plus positive infinity, which is going to be zero. And then you have to substitute in your x, I mean, sorry, x, s, my fault. And then you have this as your final answer when you distribute that negative right there, which is f of s is equal to ln of s minus ln of s minus 1. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Nice. Anyone has any questions? If I really have to, you know, see something, just because of the domain of ln, mm -hmm. you, you, know, you know what I'm going to say? Think about the domain of ln. Oh, yes. Do we know S is positive? Do we know S minus one is positive? S minus one? Uh, no. Yeah, so we have to we have to enforce with the absolute value sign. Oh, okay, gotcha. The absolute <laughs> value sign right there. Okay, okay gotcha. Yeah. Because the domain, it can't be negative, gotcha. Right. It has to be positive. Yeah, so technically it would have to be this. So, yeah. 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 OK, great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Xian, then Liz. You? Yes. No, this is, I know. This is not to be kind of told this one, OK? You, you see, oh. you see, oh, I call something to be one one. There's no idea, OK, either. I, this, Can you see? Yeah. Oh, okay. Um. Um. Inverse the uh, Laplace transform by giving that function. The twenty seventh. I have the two matters. Well, I'm like uh, inching. I don't know which one is correct. But I just want to share with uh, the classmates. Give me the advice. Which one is right? Which one is wrong? So the first matter is uh, okay. Uh, a capital F of S, the function 
equal like four over x uh, q minus four x. The first matter, I uh, factor out like a two factors from the uh, denominator. So I use like a uh, 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 hold on one second. Can you yeah. factor? Can you factor s squared minus four? Oh, you did. Second I matter, did. you did. Second matter, you see. So that's yeah, why it's two factors. Yeah. So I used like a uh, partial fraction, and then I got two uh, a over x uh, plus because the second one have like square. So that's why the uh, numerator had a bs plus c over x square minus four. So I calculate this uh, and calculate the that get that I get the a equal negative one, and then because a plus b equals zero and b equal uh, one. And then the C equals zero. I plus in back this uh, uh, fashion partial equation. So I inverse the X and then the uh, capital F of X uh, equal here and to uh, like a, a fashion partial fraction. So one negative one over X plus X over X square minus four. So when I inverse both of this, the final answer is a, a, a lower f of t equal next one plus a coach two t. That's the matter one. The second thing, and then I, uh, I like a denominator have like a two three factor. So I use the same matters like a, a partial fraction. So a over x plus b over x minus two plus c over x uh, plus two. So I did the same calculator. I get the a equal negative one, and then the b equal one over two, c equal one over two. Uh, take the like uh, inverse for the capital F of x. I get the final answer is negative one plus one over two e two t plus one over two e negative two t. So that's two it's matter terrible. get a different result. I don't know which one is correct. You think you think those uh, the two results are different? What is the Cauch two t definition? Oh, <laughs> they're the same. I don't, I don't know the coach because I never and then I learned the coach. So that's yeah, why. Coach of 2t is exactly in your uh, second answer. So oh, e I to just, the 2t and then to oh. the next divided by 2. OK. So those two that answers that are one exactly is the same, right? Yes. OK. Oh, thank you. Yeah. I think you for me, it's different. So that's why <laughs> I just bring up and then the shares all oh, two matters. I got like a different answer. So thank you, Professor. You're welcome. OK, Liz. Yes. Can you see it? It's probably it's popping up. Not yet. No, I don't think it's popping up. Can you yes, see now? Me? Okay. Yes. So I did a modified version of number three from Omur 19. Um, the, the, the equation that I have uh, is x double prime plus 5x prime plus 6x equals zero. And my initial condition or x of zero is zero and f 
prime of zero is one. So I re I'm gonna use Laplace transform to Laplace transform in Laplace and in inverse to solve this. So I have L x of double prime t plus five. L x of prime t plus 6 L of x equals to 0. I know that L of x double prime t is s square x s minus s x 0 minus x prime 0. Um, L of x prime t is s x s minus x 0 and xs is just l of xt so i'm gonna replace those um substitute those into my transform equation and now i have a square xs minus s x zero minus x prime zero plus five times s xs minus x zero plus 6xs equals 0. Um, I replace x0 and x prime of 0 by their value, which are res respectively 0 and negative 1. Then I simplify. So I have now s square xs minus 1 plus 5sxs plus 6xs equals to 0. Um, I factor xs and then i solve for it so i add a plus one on both sides then i divide by a square plus five x plus six so i factor my denominator uh, by finding two numbers that times two six and when i add them that's give me five so i found two and three so now i have i have transformed my one over x s square plus 5 s plus 6 onto a 1 over s plus 2 factor of s plus 3. So now I'm going to use a partial fraction. Um, I make my 1 over s plus 2 times s plus 3 equals to a over s plus 2 plus b over s plus 3. Then I combine them put them into this uh, uh, common denominator so that's give me um as a new as a new numerator now a times s plus three plus b times s plus two um now i'm gonna consider like my first fraction and my last one since the denominator are the same i kind of like it just ignore them so i have i now i'm just gonna work with the numerator so i have one equals to a times s plus 3 plus b times s plus 2. So uh, first I distribute, then I factor um, where I, um, I see an s. So I have a plus b times s plus 3a plus 2b. So now I'm going to have two equation, um, a plus b, which, or, which is like the coefficient of s, going to be equals to zero since, since I don't have any terms with s and 3a plus 2b going to be equals to one. Um, a plus b equals to zero just mean that a equals negative b. So I take this new value of a and I substitute it into my second equation. So I have negative 3b plus 2b equals one b equals to negative 1 since b is the opposite of a so a is 1. I go back and replace a and b by their value which are 1 and negative 1. So my xs is now 1 over s plus 2 plus negative 1 over s plus 3. So the solution x of t is going to be the inverse Laplace transform of x of s so i'm gonna uh, have laplace inverse of x s equals laplace inverse of one over s plus two minus one over s plus three i kind of like 
separate them. I have inverse of 1 over s plus 2 minus Laplace inverse of 1 over s plus 3. And this just gives me e to the negative 2t minus e to the negative 3t. So if I had s minus 3 instead of s plus 3, my it will just be e exponent 3t. But since um, I have s plus 3, it is e exponent negative 3t. So my final answer is just e to, um, to the negative 2t minus e to the negative 3t. Great. Um, I got a second one, which is from Amur 20, kind of similar. So let me share this now. No, you cannot do similar questions. It has to be different. Uh, I mean, it's from like a different homework. Oh, okay. Which is to find the inverse Laplace transform of. I see. Okay. Yeah, she's looking for another one. Maybe Liz, while you're looking, we can have Albert go first. Albert? Um, it's already loading, so it Oh, it's will... loading? Okay. Yes, we'll show up in a minute. We'll wait for you. Sorry. Yes, it's here now. Okay, you can you can see it? Yeah. So we have to find the Laplace transform of cap capital F of S equals to S plus 4 over S squared plus 4 S plus 8. Here I'm trying to find two numbers that times to 8 and that also add to 4. I couldn't find any, so I had to complete the, um, the square. So to find, I, I see that I have a, S squared plus 4 S. So to find my missing um, my missing terms, I did four divided by two, which gives me two. So I know the term that I'm missing is just two squared, which is four. The good thing is that I have an eight. I will split that into four plus four, so I can reconstruct my um, my square. I have um, I'm looking for the Laplace inverse of s plus 4 over s squared plus 4 s plus 4 plus 4 then i transfer my s squared plus 4 s plus 4 into s plus 2 square so i i realize that i have a plus 4 on the numerator which i can transform into a uh, 2 plus 2 so i can also have a s plus 2 in the numerator so i transform my numerator, which was s plus 4, into s plus 2, plus 2. Now I'm going to separate them. I'm going to have s plus 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 4. Then I'm going to have plus the inverse, the Laplace inverse of 2 over s plus 2 squared plus 4. Then I'm going to shift my s and um, my s plus 2 going to become s now and I'm going to write my 4 in terms of 2 exponent 2. So I can um, quickly identify it using like the, the formula that is below. So I have now s over s squared plus 2 squared plus Laplace inverse of 2 over s squared plus 2 squared. I know that the inverse of s over s squared plus k squared is cos kt. And the Laplace inverse of k over s squared plus k squared is sine kt. Um, my k in this case is 2. So I have, I'm going to have cos t2. But since I did a shift, 
I take S to S plus two, I'm gonna have as a coefficient, I'm gonna have a e to the negative two t. So my final answer is e to the negative two t cos two t plus e to the negative two t sine two t. I have the e to the negative two t is because I did a shift. I I transform my s. I had like my s into s plus two. Okay. All right. Okay, Albert. Anyone let um, okay. else? Okay. So let me get the file ready. Okay, Albert, then Israel. Is Israel, Israel here? Not really. He has some connection problem. Oh no. Okay, it's going. Okay, you see it? Mm -hmm. I just did a modified version. So the, there's a convolution theorem here um, on homework 21. It's problems one to four. And wants to calculate uh, f of t times g of t. Um, and so there's a lot of different problems here, one to four. So I did f of t equals to t and g of t equals t squared. Um, and so in the notes, we have this equation here, h of t equals f of t times g of t, which equals the um, integral from, um, we're using w now, from, from zero to t of f of w times g of t minus w dw. So if you do, if you put in f of t and g of t, you get t times t squared uh, and equals to the integral of from zero to t, w, that's instead of t, and t minus w squared dw, um, where t minus w squared, right, if we distribute that out and we get t squared minus 2tw plus w squared, uh, so then we have w times that times dw. Um, and then if we distribute out the w also, then we have t squared w minus 2tw squared plus uh, w cubed dw, um, where now we can actually separate them because we have all pluses and minuses. So we can separate the integral into three separate ones. So we have uh, all of them from zero to t. We have t squared w times d, uh, dw, sorry, minus two times the integral from zero to t, tw uh, squared dw, plus from zero to t, w cubed dw. Um, and then we get the integrals for each of them. So um, t squared stays uh, as if it's a constant, right? And so then we have t squared w squared over 2 from 0 to t minus 2 times t w cubed over 3 from 0 to t and uh, w to the 4 over 4 from 0 to t. Uh, and now when you plug in t and 0, I mean, the 0 gets um, uh, the go, right? It comes out to 0. So, so you plug in t and you get t to the 4th over 3 minus 2 times t to the 4th over 3 plus t to the 4th over 4. Uh, and then when you get a common denominator, it's 12. So you get 4t to the 4 over 12 minus 8t to the 4 over 12 plus 3t to the 4 over 12. And that comes out to minus t to the 4 over 12. And that's the convolution okay. of uh, t times t squared. All right. Okay. Nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Israel has some problem. Anyone else like to present? If not, we're done for tonight. So Thursday is a Thanksgiving and a happy Thanksgiving. Help your mom to prepare the dinner. Um, yeah, if you uh, want to talk to me, I'm still here. Yes. Oh, no, I'm just saying happy Thanksgiving today. Oh, OK, thank you. <laughs> You too, Christian. Thank you. Professor, I have a question. Yes, yeah, please. Um, 
I sent you an yeah. email. I don't know if you oh, saw it yet. Hold on. I have so yeah. many emails I'm telling you. It's just so difficult for me to read one by one. It's the because the Brooklyn email okay. does not allow me to. Oh, it was so difficult. Okay, anyway, anyway, can you can you just talk to me now instead of a? Oh, I see it catching up in uh, class. Yeah, I can talk to you now. Yeah. I can talk to you now. I mean, do you, I don't know if you're still going to be recording. I'm going to be asking oh, yeah, about yeah, grades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me 